NFL on ESPN at 11. Turn to ESPN News for NFL Monday quarterback presented by Coors Light. At 7.30, Monday Night Countdown delivered by UPS. Why are some players just always there? There's never a crucial moment where they're not in the frame. The play that stands out is in the Washington Redskins game. Who blocks punts in the NFL with regularity? Who does that? The pressure is blocked, and Reed got it. Oh, the biggest play of the year right there by Ed Reed. Go, Ed. Go, Ed. Go, Ed. Yes. Ed Reed coming up with the big play. This guy is a complete football player. If at this point in your pro career, I was going to say that we had to put one Ed Reed play in a time capsule, what's the one play you would um, say, that's all about me? <laughs> I would say the, the play against Cincinnati. Back to throw, across the middle, picked off. It is Ed Reed. I'm making moves. I done juked. I done faked everybody. The whole team's chasing me. Guys not blocking. I put the ball up at the five. They knock it out of my hand. Oh, fumbles the ball. It is still loose in the end zone. Ed Reed made one of the great bonehead plays you're ever going to see. And the Bengals recovered in the end zone. Are you me? <laughs> I would say that's the play because I'm fun. I'm out there. I'm having fun. Come on, rock, paper, scissors. Whoever win, go. You know, I'm like a little kid in the candy shop. Ed Reed has been at the center of standout plays since he was a high school star in St. Rose, Louisiana. Reed was the second oldest of five boys whose parents worked long hours to provide for their children. Reed admits he had a comfortable life, but as a student, he could not keep focused. In freshman year and all that, always the, the, you know, the life of the party. He walks in, he takes over, he's, you know, he's loud, he's fun. Ladies, man, all the girls were after him. And he was, they were. I mean, he was like, all of them. Oh, Miss Hall, you got to introduce me to him. I don't I remember that part. <laughs> John Hall was a secretary at Destrahan High School and a mentor to many of its students. When Reed realized he was falling behind, he went to Hall with a proposal that would change his life. I probably missed about 20-something days one year. Couldn't miss no more school. And Miss Hall was like, you know, I can help you. It was like, okay, I come stay with you, and you can just take me to school to make sure I come or something like that. So. What did you tell your parents when you decided that you were going to move in here? It was more of asking, you know, because, I mean, I'm, I'm still their son. You know, it was like, Dad, could I do this, you know, to better myself? And he was like, if it's going to help you, go ahead. So your parents were in favor of this? Yes, yes. Did you feel like you were abandoning your family? Well, at times it, it sinks in that way, but I mean, you, you, I mean, from talking to my mom, my dad, Miss Hall, you know, in a relationship that we all have, it was pretty much put in my court, you know, and it turns out to, this way, you know, so it was like, okay, dad and the son made a great decision. It's all been like more of a extended family type thing, you know, get along great. With the help of his extended family, Reed's decision paid off. He graduated from high school and accepted a football scholarship to the University of Miami. Larry Coker calls him the single best player the University of Miami has ever had. He says that he didn't have to coach that team, that Ed Reed would police everything for him. And times where he wasn't policing things, he would just grab the football and go in the other direction. Ed Reed takes the ball out of exchange, brings it over to 40, down the middle. It's a race, the 30, the 20. Reed is gonna score for Miami. The Hurricanes are gonna win this game. The INT off the deflection, and it ended up in the hands of Reed, and Ed Reed brings it all the way in. When he gets the ball, he knows what to do with the ball. He holds it in one hand, so I love that. And he's always ready to pitch it. He laterals it to Deion Sanders. Prime time to the 30. Offensive-minded defensive backs are not new to the NFL. But Ed Reed is now the NFL's best. In 2004, he broke Charlie McNeil's single-season record for interception return yards which is not surprising when you realize that Reed is looking to make history every time he touches the ball. 
Here's a, a situation that I want to I want your opinion on. The Ravens are up 20 to 13 in the fourth quarter, but the Browns are driving downfield for a game tying touchdown. 45 seconds left. Pass is tipped in the air, goes right to you, six yards deep in the end zone. All you got to do, take a knee, Move game it. is over. Move it. But you decide to run it out. Yeah. might say, oh, what's he doing? You know, you could have taken the ball and run and been fumb and fumbled. Yeah. Somebody could say, well, geez, that's not very smart. Yeah. Um, well, I'm pretty sure most, most likely I'm going to take that shot. Pitch out. Lamont Jordan looking to throw. Throws it downfield, and Ed Reed picks it off in the end zone. Get out, get out, get out. Like in the backyard. I play it like I'm in the backyard. Now he's bringing it out. Here he comes. And that's how I love it. Oh, God. He's at the 10, look out, he's at the 20, and Reed at the 30. Go in, go in, go in, go in. He's gonna go, and Reed is in for the touchdown. Another pick for Ed Reed. He's got a great feel for a quarterback and what he's gonna do with the ball. I mean, he'll bait people better than anyone I've ever seen. I made it look like I was going back to the half, and then I came back down. We were playing Buffalo, and Buffalo was threatening our red zone. They were down inside about the 12th yard line. Next thing I know, Ed's over here hiding behind the referee, and I'm saying, uh, what's going on here? The play develops, and you see Ed jump out from behind the referee like, ha ha, I got you. He just has that special kind of it that you can't coach. It's just something innate. On top of that, what makes it really exceptional is that he, uh, he puts in so much time studying. He knows where the quarterback wants to go with the ball when it's a three deep versus a two deep. See, he was looking to throw here, or maybe even to this back coming out. It's gonna figure you out. You need to figure yourself out so that you can stay, keep Ed away from where the ball's going. On defense and special teams, Ed Reed's success stems from a simple formula. Get to the football. And in doing so, let nothing get in your way. Keep going, boy. Y'all keep going. Keep going, baby. Good job. Keep going. In 2004, Reed was named the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year, an honor he now has in common with teammates Ray Lewis and Deion Sanders. Boy! Boy, you're a MVP, boy! You're a beast at the... No, you're a beast at the end! Deion, you know, and Ray, man, to be in the same group on the same... Oh, my God. Like... <laughs> Now that's something that'll make me cry, <laughs> you know, because I, wa I watched primetime growing up. Like, I watched Dion. I wanted to be like Dion. And the year before he came, I did his dance. And then the next year he come, I'm like, I'm still in awe. Like, I'm like, this Dion. It's rare when a young player has the chance to learn from two future Hall of Famers. Let's go! Let's hunt now! Let's go! Let's hunt now! Let's go! Let's hunt! But then, Ed Reed always seems to be in the middle of rare situations. Reed coming from behind and strips the football. For much of his career, he's enjoyed the kind of luck that you hope for. The ball is loose, Ed Reed picks it up. Or perhaps the kinds of opportunities you must learn to create. Yes! Ed Reed stripped him and picked it up and ran it in for the score. Best safety in the NFL, man, right here. When we return, the football.